I have seen the requests. We are finally doing a new favorites video. Welcome back everyone. Today's video is just going to be a new favorites video. I have been seeing <laughs> so many comments recently and I've been seeing in my DMs, people are like, when are you doing a new favorites video? I do Q and A's on my Instagram like every other week. I'm March Beauty Word on Instagram if you're not following me over there. I try to do a Q and A like every other week and it seems like for the past like three or four Q and A's I've done, people are like, a favorites video? Can we get a favorites video from you? And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So I am going to be running through an updated favorites video. So I have uh, mostly beauty products in here that I want to share, some newer products, but also some like older products that I've been using again and just loving again. Um, I do have one book in here to recommend and then kind of like a lifestyle favorite as well. So that is what we will be doing. I will link everything in my description box, of course, including the makeup that I am wearing. I did film a little lip combo uh, for this one today, which I always put on my lip combos on Instagram. Everything will also be linked in the YouTube shopping button. Tube told me in our last meeting that I have to make sure to remind everyone to like the video and leave a comment and engage with the video. So that is my reminder to you that that is something that helps out content creators a lot. If you engage with the video in any way, thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't matter. It's all the same. Uh, but to jump into it. So let me see if I, do I want to start with like new or old product? Just kind of like, I was going to say ping pong back and forth. I don't know if ping pong is exactly what I want to say, but sure. Let's go with that. But an older product, this is a foundation and I've just been wearing this one pretty non-stop for the past like week maybe i've been dabbling in with some self tanner moments it hasn't always been turning out the best for me uh, i'm actually planning to self tan again tonight and i'm slightly terrified of what's going to happen um you know one time i just got it like all over the bottom of my feet like i didn't even understand like literally half of each foot was like stained with self tanner and i was like what and then the second time like i like my elbows were very strange looking i don't know what's going on but some of my foundations that i really love are a little bit too light when i use a self tanner so i was like you know what i'm gonna whip out the urban decay stay naked hydromaniac tinted glow hydrator i have the shade 41 light medium this is a really good match for me in the warmer weather months or when i do have self tanner on and i'm like like i was always i was gonna say obsessed i always liked this a foundation or i think it's technically considered like the skin tint i've always liked it a lot but then you know i just i try so many things and then i move on to like the new things but then i'm like okay there's still so many other like great products that you still love and this is over halfway gone for sure like this is like this is getting down there i would absolutely love to finish this one off i think that would be so exciting but this is one that i continually reach for this is also one that i have recommended to so many people when it first came out i want to say it was two years ago maybe when it first came out i was recommending it to a lot of people and everyone was telling me how much they loved it people with dry skin people with oily skin normal comp like it didn't seem to matter so many people were like yes this is the one and i was like yes so i'm really happy that i have been using that one up again wait okay, some newer complexion products that i've really been loving these are from catrice so i mentioned these in uh, a pr haul and then I feel like I just mentioned them again somewhere else, but I don't remember where it was. But from Catrice, they sent me over their Soft Glam Filter Fluid. This is a glow booster. And then also their Tinted Serum Foundation. This has hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. So I'm going to say that I really, really like this product. The glow booster, I kind of was using it to see because it's a little bit darker than the foundation the foundation they sent me the shade 36 c and i was like this is going to be too light especially when i do self tan like there's absolutely no chance that i can wear it but when i saw the glow booster i was like oh maybe this would help if i like mix the two together and i think it did a pretty well job because this is in 30 medium i think it did a decent enough job when i wasn't self tanning that i could color match well enough and it definitely did give me a glow i do have more dry skin usually and i could tell that this one did make my skin glowy without being too much it wasn't too overwhelming or anything like that so if that's a product you're looking for catrice is very affordable and they're also available on amazon 
For me, it's not a step that I use all that often. So I was like, if I had this in my right foundation match, I probably would stop wearing this and I would just go with the foundation. But the foundation is really the standout to me. So this comes in a dropper form. This is one that has a very natural finish to the skin, which is what my preference is. And it's a little bit more lighter coverage. I would say it's more of like a light to medium coverage, again, which is a personal preference of mine. But just the way that it looks on the skin, again, it's like a your skin but better product. I, I don't want to say that it makes me like necessarily look like I'm super hydrated. Again, if I wear it with the glowy, like sure, I look a little bit more glowy. But it just really is a your skin but better. And I appreciate that so much to the point where I kept wearing it. I kept wearing it. And I was like, you're going to get to the point where you can't shade match anymore. I ordered a new one off of Amazon. I think these were only $10. And I think mine's coming today, which I'm very excited about. Hopefully, I did a better job shade matching myself this time around but i would love to wear this when it gets warmer you know we're having nicer days in las vegas after this i'm going to go for my third hot girl walk of the day and i am so excited about it um but i really wanted to get this back in a shade that i could wear more often so i purchased it myself and i was like yes we're going to get this. So I highly, highly recommend this. If you are looking for an, a new foundation and you like that more lighter coverage, your skin, but better natural finish kind of look, I think that you would really like that one. Another complexion product, and this is another oldie but goodie, and this is from Too Faced. This is their Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer. Okay, so I'm using the shade Light Beige. This is a new one that I just opened. I had like a backup of it from at some point Too Faced had sent me a PR package. And I used to love this concealer. I was actually very upset because after I moved to Las Vegas, you know what's funny? This is plastic now. After I moved, this used to be glass, right? Or am I crazy? It had to have been glass because when I first moved to Las Vegas, the first season that I went to day clubs, I didn't realize that you couldn't have glass and that meant literally anything glass. Like I packed this concealer because we were gonna be there all day and I was like, need to have my concealer for touch-ups. So I put this one in my pool bag and they took it and I was furious because I love the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, but this is definitely plastic now. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, but I, again, this is one that I really love from the past and the reason that I started using it again is a couple of weeks ago, I actually had my makeup done by a professional makeup artist. I was doing an Oscars and Vanity Fair event. I put a little YouTube short up of that experience, um, but it was so fun and it was kind of a big deal. So like we ordered dresses, I was working with the stylist, I had someone do my hair and then I had someone do my makeup and I you know, was obviously looking at everything that she was doing. I was asking a lot of questions, you know, why this product or why do you do your technique that way sort of thing. But she used this concealer and I have struggled with hormonal acne and it's definitely quite bad right now. My cortisol levels are really high. My progesterone levels are really high. Um, also just my anxiety in general is quite high. And when I deal with things like that, I can get hormonal acne flare ups. So that's something that I'm dealing with. So I was like, how is she going to cover everything that's happening on my face? And she used this concealer and I was like, okay, now I love the, the NARS Soft Matte and I will continue to love the NARS Soft Matte, don't get me wrong. That's a really nice one for me, especially to put into my purse because it's just a little pot concealer so I can use it for touch-ups if need be. But this one I was like, okay, at home, I'm gonna give it a try. And I do feel like it is covering so well. Like. My skin, I really want to do an update it how I cover my acne routine, um, especially with talking with her and seeing how she did it. I was like, I really want to do an update it routine on that because I know acne is something that a lot of us struggle with. For me, I kind of have my ups and downs with it now when my hormones are leveled out and things are pretty cool. My skin is quite clear and then it can it can jump to the reverse side so quickly um so i would really love to be able to show that and i think i'm going to show it with the Too Faced born this way concealer because this is what i've been wearing the past couple of weeks now since i got my makeup done for that event and i've just been super impressed with it so this is just what i use to spot conceal i do use a different concealer on my under eyes um, I'm, I could use the same one, but for whatever reason, I just prefer to use this to spot conceal and I just take a brush and start to build it up. And I think that it's been working out so fantastic. So wanted to mention that one. I know that we do have the Sephora sale coming up. I do have one video up so far of what is uh, in my cart or on my wish list. So if you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out. 
So um, not everything is going to be available at Sephora, but that is one that's available there if you're interested in picking it up when you have a discount. This kind of goes along with complexion products, but DSMD shop sponges are back and I am so excited about this. So I loved these years ago as well. They've been mentioned in favorites videos in the past. And then the brand kind of went on hiatus for a little bit and then they came back and I was like, yes. And I was going to buy sponges myself and she ended up sending me like six and I was like, are you joking me? These sponges are so nice. First of all, they're beautiful and they have like other fun ones too. One time around holiday, they came out with like a red and white striped one kind of gave off like candy cane vibes, if you will. And I was like living, breathing, sneezing for these. These are just, they're soft. I don't know what it is about these sponges. They're $6. They're so easy to clean. And I don't know something about the way that they look like it can kind of hide the fact that they're dirty, right? Which is a little bit dangerous because you do still need to clean your sponges, but they're very easy to clean. I like the nice slope in them as well. These have just been some of my favorite sponges for a long time. So I was super happy to see the brand come back. So I definitely recommend checking them out. Throw a little lifestyle favorite at you now. Um, I finally tried poppies for the first time. It was actually when I went to Nashville, I was visiting a girlfriend. We were at her apartment and she asked if I wanted anything to drink. I opened up a fridge and I see these poppies and I was like, okay, I hear so many people talk about poppy. I've never tried them myself. I'm a really big fan of Olipop. I've mentioned Olipops a lot. I order them regularly from Amazon or I grab them from Target. I really love those because they're an alternative to soda, which I don't really drink trying to remember the last time that I had a soda. I don't know. I don't, I don't really drink sodas. I prefer um, either just straight water or something like an Olipop or now these poppies. So um, it says for a healthy gut, there's five, only five grams of sugar in here. Facts, no one wants a basic drink. So make every happy hour with this bubbly, better for you prebiotic soda that keeps your gut happy and gives your bod a boost. Downright delicious with five grams of sugar or less. These bubbles will benefit these bubbles with benefits will be your new BFF. And I think that's so funny. So some of the ingredients, we have sparkling water, organic cane sugar, apple cider vinegar, cherry juice, agave inulin, uh, lemon juice, lime juice, and stevia. So, and this one is the cherry limeade. Cherry limeade is one of my favorites. I usually just order the variety pack off of Amazon. But again, when I was diagnosed with PCOS in 2022, I tried to make quite a few changes. Honestly, at the time, I'd, I'd pretty much already given up soda. I, I quit drinking soda a long time ago. Not to say that I never have one. Every now and then, I'm, like, I'll grab like a Dr. Pepper from somewhere, but it's very, very rare for me. I tried to cut out, like caffeine was really what I was going for when I was trying to cut it out. Now I usually get my caffeine in the form of tea, like a green tea or a black tea or something like that. Um, but that was, that was a choice I made like back in college. Honestly, I don't, really don't even know why, but that's what I did. So not a big soda drinker, but it's nice to have something different and a little bit of like variety in my fridge because otherwise I just drink a ton of water and, you know, I try to put electrolytes in my water. I really like the element packs or I put like cucumbers or lemons in my water just to make it like a little bit more exciting, but sometimes it's nice to have something a little bit different. So I still love the Olipops, but I also really enjoy the poppies. And again, I order mine off of Amazon and I just find them find it really easy that they come to my door and it's fun i also am a big fan of making mocktails and these are really fun to be able to make mocktails with around valentine's day people were doing this like raspberry sorbet with the um the strawberry right it was the strawberry poppy so good so things like that if you're a mocktail girly or you want to be a mocktail girly poppies are a good one to check out as well another product that i have this one is newer to me but i really really like this speaking of like breaking out um this is from hero and this is their rescue balm it's a color correcting green cr green cream <laughs> There we go. I just picked this up from Target. It was in one of those sections that they just have a bunch of like travel sized things on the stand. And I was actually buying some products for my Vegas retreat. I made goodie bags for everyone that came and they had these little things of sunscreen. And I was like, oh, I should give everyone a little sunscreen. They're coming to the desert. And then I was going through everything and I saw this and I was like, you know, I'm just going to give it a try because like I said, the hormonal acne is back and it's quite bad right now. It's, you know, especially around my mouth area and like my jawline and things like that. And I feel like I can do a pretty good job covering it with concealer, but sometimes I don't want to do like a full concealer or foundation routine, but I just want the redness to be toned down a little bit because sometimes it's not even the active acne that's as bad. It's the pigmentation that's left over from when 
the acne was active, right? And sometimes the redness is just so angry looking on my face that I'm like, what can I do to disguise this? And you know, it's, it's always been known, I'm not telling you anything new here, but that green color corrects red. So I've tried some other ones in the past. I know there's one from Dr. Jart that I've tried. I didn't really love it. I ended up giving it to a friend who was dealing with like rosacea. She didn't really love it either. And then I just really haven't gone back to anything. Decided to give this a try and I am very impressed with this. I do wanna buy like a full size because I do think that I will definitely go through this little mini right here. But it was nice to be able to test it out. I honestly don't remember how much it was and it was like, you know, buy 10 things, get three for free or something like that. So I was like trying to count everything that I was getting. Um, but it's definitely something that I wanna look into getting a larger version or at least even like a smaller version to tide me over as well. But I did a short and I'm sure I'll put it on YouTube. Um, like I did a TikTok already and again, I'm sure I'll put it on YouTube. But you can really see that it takes away some of that very angry, just like boom, in your face redness. And when I put my TikTok up, a lot of people were saying that you love this too. I did see quite a few recommendations from this Dila. So if you want another recommendation, I haven't tried that one yet, but I was seeing definitely a lot of people recommend it. But a lot of you were also saying that you really like the hero or someone you know really likes the hero. Um, so this is one that I would recommend if you deal with acne or a lot of redness on your face. A skincare product that I have been enjoying right now is from Clarins. This is their Cryo Flash Cream Mask. So I was really curious to try this. I actually had it in my cart a couple of different times because I started seeing it going viral online. A lot of people were talking about it and I was like, should I try it? I do like me a good mask. Um, and then I actually got it sent to me in PR and I was like, what? This is such a great day. Like I was so excited about that. This is something that I put on my face and I leave on for about 10 minutes and it gets really, really cold, which makes sense with the name and cryotherapy and all of that. Listen, I am someone who I cold shower every single morning. I, if I could have a cold plunge in my apartment, I would. If I go to a spa and there's a cold plunge, I'm all about it, like I'm getting in that pool, right? I love stuff like that, so doing that for the face and helping with like pores and things like that, I was really curious to try out this mask and I really enjoy it and I use it a couple of times a week actually. I feel like you can actually see the bottom of it. So again, I put it on, it feels very soothing and then it's not like it gets that cold while it's on your face that I'm like uncomfortable with it. But when I rinse it off, I can tell that my face is like kind of frozen. And then when I go to put sunscreen on next, it's like, oh, it's almost like my face is kind of numb. Um, and you know, I also love to use like my ice roller in the morning. I see a lot of people doing the whole like sticking their face in a bucket of ice water, helps with inflammation, puffiness, redness, that sort of thing. Again, pores, it can help with acne. So that's kind of what the mask is doing for it. And again, I really like it. I like to use it a couple times a week, especially after nights where I do like a deeper exfoliation. In the morning, I like to start off with the cryo mask and I think it's a good one. Hey, a cheek product that I have been loving is from Dior. This is the Rose, the Rose Wood Blush. So I really do love the Dior Rosy Glow blushes. I also have the one in pink. I purchased this last year and I think that it's beautiful. I went to Ireland, a bunch of the women had this in their makeup bag as well. And I was like, you know what? Really wanna buy Rosewood. I had a gift card to Ulta and I was like, I'm just gonna buy it. And I think that it is so beautiful. Now I think pink is like a really fun one for the warmer months that we have coming up. And this one is a little bit more of like a I don't want to say berry. It's a little bit more of like maybe like a darker terracotta, I guess I would say, but it is so beautiful and it's so long wearing. Like I can still see myself wearing this all throughout the warmer months as well, but the Dior blushes are so long wearing. They just do not move on the face. So if that is something that you're like, my blush is always disappearing or like you work long hours, you can't do touch ups and you want your blush to say you're big blush girly. The Dior blushes are expensive. I believe they're $40. 40 $45. So they are expensive for a blush, but you only need a small amount of product and they will last on your face. Like you don't need to be doing touch-ups with this one. So definitely recommend. Mascara that I've been loving is from L'Oreal. This is the Panorama Mascara. So I bought this from Target. I was seeing quite a few good reviews on it. So I was like, I'll go ahead and give it a try. I want to say it was around like $10 maybe at my Target, but I know sometimes it can differ with retailers. This is a beautiful mascara and it does not move. That's one of my biggest things when it comes to reviewing and trying out mascaras. I don't want smudging, flaking, I don't want raccoon eyes at the end of the night. Busy gal, sometimes I'm out late at night, sometimes I'm in the Vegas heat, sometimes I'm at the pool, you never know. Like I don't want my mascara budging and I don't wear false lashes a lot. 
This mascara does not move, but I will also say it is kind of hard to remove at night. When I wear this one, I really have to make sure I'm getting my cleansing balm like all up in my eyelashes to make sure that I get the mascara off. Because there's sometimes in the morning I go in the mirror and I look and I'm like, did I even take my mascara off last night? Like why is the rest of my makeup off and not my mascara? So that is one thing I will say, if that's something that like you absolutely cannot stand in mascaras, I probably wouldn't recommend this one to you. But to me, I love that it gives my lashes more volume and makes them look fuller and then it doesn't move. That for me, like I would rather have that and then take a little bit longer to remove it than have mascara all over my face. But everyone is different. Before we finish off with lip products, I wanted to mention a palette that I've been loving. The Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. So I did do a first impressions on this one and I did eye swatches of everything. So I even put the bronzer and contour and blush shades on my eyes. I put them on my face. I put all five of the eyeshadows on my eyes. I don't know if you can tell in the camera how dirty this palette is right now. This has been getting used and abused by me. Like the mirror is full of like shadow and pa like, this palette, I thought that I was going to love it. I did because it very much reflects my makeup styles right now, which is very quick. Um, you know, like I just don't want to take a lot of time. I, I want to do a single shadow look and just be able to get out the door. This embodies that. And I was talking about the Natasha Denona Glam Face and Eye Palette and I was saying I wish she had a palette that had blushes and bronzers versus a blush and a highlight because I don't wear highlight. And I was like, I would use that so much more. Then she came out with this and I was like, yes, please. I use this so much. It's what I have on today. I have the bronzer and the blush on. I will say for the bronzer, every single time that I wear the bronzer out of this palette and I look at myself in photos and videos, whether it be on my phone, whether it be on this camera, I'm like, what is, what? What is different? It just is such like an effortless, natural bronze to my face. And it, it truly, every time I'm like, why does my skin look so good and beautiful and bronze? It's this bronzer in here. And I just mix them all together. When I put my brush in, I just swirl it all around. Same with the blushes. I just kind of go back and forth between the two. The eyeshadows are also phenomenal. To me, Dreamy is my favorite to the point where I was using Dreamy so much. I was like, I'm going to hit pan in this shade immediately. So I tried to back off Dreamy a little bit. Then I went over to using Everyday a lot. And I would sometimes put a little bit of Dreamy on top. But I love Everyday. Statement, I use all the time for my liner. I just do a little bit of shadow liner. Use that all the time. Soft, though, is what I've been wearing a lot lately. It's what I have on today. Honestly, I don't even go for pink eyeshadows all that often. But something about soft. And I do, like, sometimes I use a brush. Sometimes I use my finger and I do the one shade. Every once in a while, maybe if I'm feeling a little bit fancy, I'll grab like one of the bronzer shades and I'll sweep that into my crease with a uh, blending brush. But a lot of times I really am doing one and done with these shadows. The only one I don't do a ton of as of right now is casual, but I feel like I'm gonna get there. I feel like I'm just like moving along the line of like being obsessed with one shade for a week and then moving on to the next and being obsessed again. But I love this palette so much. I'm doing a lot of traveling. In April, I'll be going to New Orleans for a week and I'm really excited about it. And I'm like, how do I not bring this palette? I love that it just has so many things in there for me and the shades, the bronzer especially, like I'm super happy with that one. So Natasha is having a spring sale right now. So I will have the link down below. It should, I think it's still going when this video is gonna go up, but it depends on how fast I edit it. So there's a spring sale up to 35% off site-wide. If the sale is already over, I do have a discount code on the website as well, and that is Samantha March, and it gets you 15% off. Actually, before we go to lips, I will do my book recommendation because I almost forgot that I do want to mention a book. So if you are new to my channel, I am also a book blogger. Um, that's how I started in social media. So I started my blog, Chiclet Plus, back in 2009. I do still post book reviews over there. I also share them on like Instagram. I used to talk more about books in my videos, but but I don't know, I kind of stopped that for a while too, but um, to just focus on beauty. But when I have five star reviews, I think it's nice to mention them. And I really wanted to talk about this book because this was definitely one where I learned a lot about our past that I had that I had no idea about. And I was talking to so many, you know, especially other women about this book. And, you know, I have a 
I, of course I have a handful of friends in my life that aren't big readers and I'm like but you should read this book though like if you're going to read any book this year like this is the book that you should read um this is called all you have to do is call and this is by Carrie Maher I will have it linked down below I do have on my Amazon storefront I keep a list of all of the books that I've read in 2024 as well so I'm always updating it over there this is set in Chicago in the early 1970s it says from the synopsis who does a woman call when she needs help Jane the best known secret in the city Jane is an underground health clinic composed entirely of women helping women, empowering them to embrace their futures by offering reproductive counseling and safe illegal abortions. Veronica, Jane's founder, prides herself on the services she has provided to thousands of women, yet the price of others' freedom is that she leads a double life. When she's not at Jane, Veronica plays the role of a conventional housewife, a juggling act that becomes even more difficult during her own high-risk pregnancy. We also meet Margaret. She's a professor, a professor at the University of Chicago, and she volunteers at Jane. Then there's Patty, who is a long devoted wife and mother, um, and her kind of like runaway sister, Eliza, comes into the picture. Um, and then they have a whole situation that they are working on as well. So that's, those are kind of the main characters that we're following. But it says, in this historic moment, when the personal was nothing if not political, Veronica, Margaret, and Patty risk it all to help mothers, daughters, sisters, and friends. With an awe-inspiring story and appealing characters, all you have to do and call celebrates the power of women coming together in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. I had no idea that Jane, that this is based off of a true story, that this was a real group of women in the 70s in Chicago that felt so firmly that women having rights over their body, over their future, was such an important thing that they learned how to give safe abortions and risked their lives and their families and their careers and their reputations and again their lives in order to help women have those rights and to have those choices. I had no idea about that. And as I was reading, I'm also Googling, like, is this a real thing? Is this, this really happened? Women really did this for each other? If that's not the most like women supporting women, I, I mean, that is just so wild to me. I've been vocal on my social media of believing in rights for everybody, whether you are a woman, whether you are a person of color, whether you are part of the LGBTQA plus community, like, that is something that I believe that we all get to have rights and when it comes to women's rights and especially as a woman myself, the ability to make the own decisions on my body and my future is a very big deal to me. Again, this comes as someone who struggled to have a child with my ex-husband and it was infertility treatments, but I still very firmly believe that we get to make those decisions for ourselves. And so while I was reading this book, I was so inspired and I was so moved by it. I feel like I'm going to cry right now. I was so moved by it because it was definitely just such a timely novel to read and to be able to understand again everything that these women did for their own community and for their people was just really awe-inspiring to me. So I don't read historical fiction all that often but typically when I do read historical fiction I gravitate towards books that are um that are about really strong female characters. I just wrote a book review today for The Woman at the Wheel by Penny Haw, and this follows uh, Bertha Benz of Mercedes Benz, and really how she had so many pivotal moments in what went on to become the Mercedes Benz empire that we know today. Those books are really fascinating to me, so to read about a group of women that did this I was very frustrated for a second that I've never heard of them, that I've never heard of the work that they did and the sacrifices that they've made and the 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 lives that they changed because of what that they were able to do. So I really wanted to share it and I definitely wanted to share it here on YouTube and recommend that you give it a read and I hope that you are as inspired as I am when you do. So now we're just going to finish it off with some lip products. Lip products are my favorite thing. So I have um, three lip liners and two lip products to share in here. So for my lip liners that I've really been loving, um, two are from Natasha Denona. I really love the Natasha Denona lip liners. I feel like they are surpassing Charlotte Tilbury for me, which Charlotte Tilbury has reigned supreme for me for lip liners I don't know for five years maybe like it's been a long time Charlotte Tilbury has always been my number one but Natasha like 
I really enjoy these lip liners and I find myself reaching for them more and more. So one is a nude shade and this is in Alona and this is kind of like a like a nude pink, like a nude mauve pink, something along those lines I would say. And I love it. The Natasha lip liners, I'll say that they remind me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury as well. They're very long wearing. They're creamy to apply without being like slippery. Um, they're more of a matte lip liner. For Alona, I love this shade so much. A lot of times I just apply this and I will line my lips and then I will kind of do a lighter hand and fill my lips in and then that's it. Sometimes I'll put a gloss over it, but um, sometimes I don't and I wear this just on its own and I think it's such a beautiful beautiful shade Natasha Denona is having a spring sale right now So they're having up to 35% off on the website. I'm not sure when it ends. Wait, I already said this didn't I because I talked about I, Okay, I had to take a phone call in the middle of filming So now like I came back and I was so like discombobulated like what but I, as I was saying I was like wait I feel like I already said this right. Yes, but my code is Samantha March But the other one from Natasha is the berry pop lip liner. So this one is more of that berry shade but this is beautiful i've been trying to do more bold lips recently and this is my number one lip liner that i am going for again just love the quality on these i love the bolder berry shade i think that it's beautiful one of my most worn lip liners right now though and i can't stop raving about it this is from hard candy this is a very affordable lip liner i believe you can get hard candy at walmart and this is just a little bit of like a darker nude. You can see that Alona is a little bit more pink and this one is a little bit um, on that darker nude side. This is gorgeous. Reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona. The staying power on this lip liner is fantastic. I applied this before we went out for St. Patty's Day and like I ate nachos, I had a dip, there was pizza, there might have been green tea slash water shots for me. Uh, and I went into the bathroom at maybe like three o'clock um i want to say it was right around three because we were trying to decide if we were leaving or not and i looked in the mirror and i was like my lip liner be looking so good right now this stays so well it applies just like the the natasha as well like if you're looking for a more affordable version of Natasha, I wouldn't say that these are exact dupes, but when it comes to like wear time and comfort and all of that, they're really similar. So these three lip liners have been like on repeat for me. And then uh, I think I've talked about this gloss before as well, but this is freaking so beautiful. This is from Catrice. Well, it might've been in my buy this, not that. The Catrice Marvelicious Lip Balm, please buy this like I really don't say stuff like that a lot because I, honestly not to sound like rude but like I don't really care what you buy like it's, it's yours like you know it's your makeup collection it's your shoe collection it's your book collection like what you choose to buy really has you know no impact on my life but every once in a while I am like guys this is a really good one and I really think that you should buy this and this is once again it's Catrice Catrice like Catrice, like you could go online and you could get the the serum foundation and the Marble Marbleicious lip balm. You could get these two products on Amazon for less than the Dior blush, okay? And and they're fantastic. So I usually wear this with the First Move lip liner. This combo, just one of my absolute favorites right now. I it's just it's on repeat all of the time. But this lip gloss makes the lips so just like shiny and beautiful and it makes the lips look bigger but there's no to me there's no like tingly feeling because I don't really like tingly plumping lip glosses yet it still makes the lips look bigger I compared this with the when I was doing the buy this not that I was talking about the Tarte Maracuja lip plump and the shimmer glass this one to me is miles better I feel like miles better from Tarte it's shinier it makes my lips look fuller um, I think the wear time is even better on this one. It's gorgeous. It's affordable. I highly, highly recommend it. And then lastly, my last lip product and last product for my favorites video. This is from Milk Makeup and this is their Jelly Cooling Tint. Okay, this is the shade Splash. I wear this all the time on my lips. Whenever I talk about this as a lip product, people are like, you're an idiot. That's not a lip product. You're dumb. That's a blush. And I'm like, okay, it's a cheek and a lip product so that's not a new thing uh, there's a lot of products out there that are cheek and lip uh, products tints whatever have you this to me when I got it I was like I want to use this as a lip product not necessarily as a blush this is considered to be a stain 
Um, so to me, a stain on the cheeks sounded like you're going to have to work really fast. And if you don't get it blended in quickly, you're going to have something funky going on. I also am gravitating more towards powder products right now for cheek products. So this, which I was letting the girls on the Vegas retreat do swatches of it because I was like, just feel it. Like it really does feel like cold water when you swatch it on your skin. And I just don't think I would like that feeling on my face, but I have not tried this as a blush. So I'm not recommending this to you as a blush. And people will be like, well, this influencer hates that as a blush. That's great. I love this as a lip product because this lip product stays. This is definitely a stain. So I like to wear this with the Berry Pop lip liner because I feel like it gives it more of that Berry Pop as well. And then when I put this over it, this it's not moving again when i let the girls swatch this at the vegas retreat the, like it stayed on their hands like the one girl was like i've washed my hands twice like i've put lotion on like i cannot get the swatch off and i was like yeah no you won't like this swatch is going to be here tomorrow on me so that's going to be great um but i just love the staying power of it especially because it's a little bit more of that bolder berry color and to me, I often didn't wear bold lips because I don't like when they fade. It just looks very unnatural. Whereas a nude, it's easier to touch up. It fades more naturally. But because this being the lip stain and having the staying power that it does, I put it on and I don't have to touch it again. I'm good. I can do whatever it is I need to do that day. This for the lips. Again, I just want to reiterate one more time. For the lips, I love this product. If you want this as a blush, I can't tell you. And I honestly, I really have no desire to put this on my cheeks right now. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll end up doing it. But especially the color Splash, this is the one that I love for that bolder lip look. And to me, it's beautiful. And I'm going to keep wearing it as a lip product but that is everything those are all of my current favorites i have some old holy grails some new products some lifestyle in here a book i really hope you enjoyed this thank you to everyone for asking me for my favorites favorites are one of those videos i, I didn't really know that people really cared to see them so now that i know that you like to see them i will definitely try to do my monthly favorites again so stay tuned for more and i'll see you in the next one